nervous here. No. Excellent. Should I be? No. <laughs> I'm, I'm, a, I'm a gentle soul. Come on, assistant. Thank you. <laughs> Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another YouTube video. Another brief one, this one, because I'm introducing you to these lovely people. Who the hell are you guys? I'm Ashley Brown. And I'm Matthew Healy. Are you sure? I think so. Well, I hope so as well. <laughs> Last time I checked. Last time I checked. <laughs> well, thank you so much for joining me. I know you've got places to be and you're busy and it must be stressful at the moment for you guys, but it's nice to see you both here today, joining your group, your posse, going out leafleting. How's Leafleton been going today? It's all right, yeah. Letterbox is a bit brutal, but other than that, it's been a nice day. Yeah, I've noticed that the ones in Sandymore are a little bit better because they're all modern and they're all up. Um, Have you noticed that? Have I you been canvassing up there? No, I haven't been around there, no. So what's the worst letterbox for you as both? I think possibly the worst one is where it's literally on the floor and I've got oh, yeah. I've got battle wounds on my hand from today as well. That so means the dogs get you yeah. as well. I understand you? why postman wear gloves now. Yeah, I mean, did you never be a paper boy? Uh, no. no I unfortunately used to be a paper boy and that used to be my bugbear. Dead thin. Yeah, um, dead stiff and you can't get it through and then you can't get your fingers back and out suddenly again. suddenly they're not stiff and they catch you. Yeah. <laughs> oh, never mind. But I'm glad you've come through unscathed. And it's a beautiful day. We're at the castle today, which is a real passion of mine. I love being here. So the purpose of this interview is just to get to know you guys a little better and see where you come from. Because if you don't mind me saying, you're pretty young people, aren't you? So what are you doing in politics? What's all this about? Well, I just felt like the people... I, I used to be a member of Labour, and I just felt like I was being let down by them. I've like grown up in a working class area and you're always hurt vote for Libra, they're the ones for you. I just felt when I got to the point where I was making my own decisions, they weren't doing what I needed them to be doing. So went on a bit of a hunt, found the Green Party, their manifesto lined up with what I wanted to be doing with climate change, uh, social injustices, reforming the economy and just thought, yeah, these are for me and became a member. And then so it so they, they really aligned with your core values, didn't they? Exactly, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I joined in January last year, I was part of the Green New Deal UK team and a lot of the Green New Deal UK stuff that they're working towards lines up with the Green Party. So I thought, well, if I be a member of the Green Party, then I can be doing that on a political level yeah. as well as volunteer, volunteering with the Green New Deal team that's, as well. That's brilliant. So do you mind me asking you both how old you are? I'm 24. 24? <laughs> 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 I'm a bit over 30, I'm not going to lie, that is very, very young and I'm, I really appreciate the fact that young blood is coming into politics because I've been interviewing people who are a bit older, who have a bit more experienced, but it's nice to see people engaging of your generation. Same question to you, what, what brought you in and what's got you involved in all this? Well, it's pretty similar to what Ashley said, so um, I was a member of the Young Labour when I was like 16 and I was part of it for about five six years and then everything that's just kind of what happened and uh, me trust and faith in it all just kind of spiraled down because you know you brought up saying you know we live in Runcorn it's it's historically always been red yeah. it's historically always been labor so and you just kind of you know you brought up with that and I don't know as I've got older question things more and with everything that's happened I just kind of um, fell out, I felt the party was out of touch so I cancelled my membership for all them and I had to look around and just saw, I had to, you know, look to see if there's anything that kind of reflects what I believe and what I want to see in the world and um, I kept coming back to the Green Party um, and also I think another thing that spurred me on to become a member is I've got a uh, two-year-old son so to have a party that can kind of try and hope for, make a better world for him when he's a bit older, um, that's, that's a really, really important thing for me because um, I don't think anyone besides the Green Party is really taking it seriously enough the damage that everyone's doing to our country and the, the world as a whole um, and uh, you know I just want to make sure when he gets a bit older the world isn't in a complete shambles, a complete mess <laughs> so Well it's down yeah. to us isn't it, yeah, us and younger to do that and congratulations by the way on uh, what's your son's name? Uh, Jensen Jensen. Jensen. Um, <laughs> I, I've got a wife right who'd love to hear that name because she she loves Jensen Ackles. Yeah. Is that where you got the name from? No, I think I think what it was was um, when you're about to have a child. I think we uh, 
when you're going through the names, you realise how many people hmm, you're not too keen on with certain names. <laughs> so then I, thought, I came up with the name Jensen and then we both looked at each other and oh my God, we don't know anyone personally called Jensen. It's like, this is it, this is the one. So then we ended up settling on that one because there was just so many names we went through and thought, oh, there was just someone we knew with that name that we weren't particularly fond of. So, <laughs> so Nigel? Boris? Oh, definitely not Boris. <laughs> no. <laughs> definitely it's not. coming back into fashion, isn't it? Mm, maybe. Baby Keith. Vic Keith. <laughs> so, how about you? I mean, what's, what's, well, let's go into personal. What, what's your passion outside of politics? What, what gets you going? Well, I'm an actor outside of politics, so just... Oh, like him, then. Like, like me as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, just been doing that. Obviously, that's not as... Uh, up and running as I would like to be because of COVID and everything that got put on the back burner. <laughs> <laughs> that was random. <laughs> A feature from the dog. Um, yeah, so I've just been working towards that. Um, yeah, it's not, not where I want it to be. I was getting there and then obviously we hit a pandemic and obviously more important things got put into play. But other than that, yeah, just working towards Well, being look, the, the younger generation has been particularly hard, by, hard hit us by the COVID crisis and also the economy being the way it is and I remember the big hoo-ha about acting just because it is freelance really you, you do you get you don't get paid if you don't work yeah, so exactly. suddenly you're out to pasture aren't you and I mean what sort of acting have you done and and uh, are you TV or stage TV and film I started in theatre did um did a foundation course at Alra uh, mm. obviously not running anymore but it was at the time um did a year there and just been doing TV and film really Started in theatre, theatre's where it began. Yeah, but always, I more, think that's the case, isn't it? More. Exactly, yeah, yeah. Everyone you speak to started in like youth theatre and done a few shows at the castle, actually. So really, it's, yeah. it's nice to come back here and, and see where I've done the shows, yeah. Yeah, because it, it is a beautiful place to host at any event, isn't it? Exactly. Around here. Um, so are you going to continue with acting or is, do you think the political side of you is going to start? gnawing away a little bit I don't know though because it seems the way doesn't it actors turn into politicians and it's like they go hand in hand it's like if you speak to an actor they usually have like the political side as well but I think acting's where I want it to be but I don't know because you don't know what's going to happen do you? The industry's changing faster than I can bloody blink uh, it, it seems to be that even streaming seems to be having a bit of trouble at the moment not exactly. not quite sure what where it's going to sit mm -hmm. so for me as when I was an actor I was just I just loved creating characters and that was it I didn't have a plan yeah. i mean did you have a plan i knew that i wanted to go into tv and film um and that's that's still the goal but it's just because like you say it's changing all the time isn't it so it's just like being ready changing with the times and just ready to go once it comes in once that self-tape comes in and off mm. you go so you're still sending off your self-tapes yeah, and still yeah, actively yeah. engaged come in yeah um few and far between but when they do come in they're like decent ones so it's like working towards booking that one job have you got an agent yeah got an agent Brilliant. and on spotlight and spotlight, all, yeah oh, all, all, all singing all dancing isn't she <laughs> all singing oh i can't wait to see what you're going to be in i can't wait obviously depending on what happens with this exactly. i mean um do, do you know you, you know what words you're in and, and stuff what what you ward halton lee halton lee oh that's a that's a tough one what about you uh bridgewater bridgewater so um i mean i know next year when you are, are you are you planning on standing this year and next year you're going to continue this ball rolling to see where it goes oh it just because you're fairly new to this aren't you yeah yeah very new it all happened quite quickly um got a call from gary saying just talking about being a member and that was one of the things that stood out to me like when i was a, a member of labor nobody mm. called me no one yeah. interacted with me it was just i was a member and that's that i was paying my fee <laughs> and yeah. that was that i didn't i got maybe the odd email but no one really like interacted with so me no engagement with, with no, no. your generation especially no and and then when gary called me and i was like this this is what i want i want someone to listen to why i'm a member i want someone to tell me what's going on mm. i want that interaction i don't want to be just through a screen with someone so yeah, to get that call it it really like set in stone like yes these are the people that i want to be with and he asked me if i would run and i said yeah and then it all happened really quickly it happened like the past few weeks and then it's just uh, uh, taking each day as it comes i don't know whether i'll run next year it's just taking this one because like you say i'm new seeing yeah. how this goes and then I, I think happens. you seem to be a perfect fit. You both seem to be naturals at this and walking and engaging, even with me, because it must be a bit daunting to be put on the spot like this. I mean, uh, let's talk to you a minute because I've been talking to you for a bit. <laughs> <laughs> it's a gab for England, you. Um, so you look at Holt and you look at Runcorn the way it is. Uh, what's the biggest bugbear for you in Runcorn? Mm, probably 
The main thing for me is housing, affordable and sustainable housing. Mm. There is absolutely none of it. And I mean, you could take a look at Darcy, for example. They're building a whole new suite of four, five, six bedroom homes starting at about £450,000. Affordable. <laughs> So, and but they're not using sustainable building practices. They're leveling, like, you know, habitats, you know, in the forest, they're, they're cutting down to, to build them. And then on top of that as well, it's like, it, the, the people buying these houses aren't from this area. I can, I can pretty much guarantee you that. And it's just, there's, there's, there's a massive population within this town that are absolutely dying for housing. Yeah, and, me being one of them, actually. <laughs> yeah, and at the minute we're stuck with, um, Developments like the one up by the shopping city where they converted the old DWP building yeah. into really poorly made flats that they don't maintain properly. And um, it, like, if you want, you know, affordable housing, it is in a, in a way available, but not uh, to the right kind of standard that you know people are entitled to. Yeah, I get that. Yeah, so, yeah. Yeah. and, and there is like you say, if they're going to use this land for something, yeah. use it appropriately. And I think that's the biggest thing, the biggest problem I have. And I don't know if you've heard the news this morning that we've saved the bridge, oh, uh, the, the yeah, Burroughs Bridge. Yeah. Um, oh, we're so over the moon, the opposition group and stuff. Are you on the opposition group? Uh, no. Uh, the opposition to Walford Farm Development. It's next to Burroughs Bridge. Right. Um, it's next to Sandy Moor, but it's got its planning application going through. Mm -hmm. And we're opposed to it because it's on floodplain. It's it's the last bit of green space we've got so uh, check it out uh, it's, it's a good little group but we finally managed to get the bridge listed and saved so it's not going to be touched and it's that heritage that Runcorn yes. really needs to protect isn't it exactly. so um, if let's say you elected let's say if things are all going smoothly um, what's the first thing you're going to do then you know what's important to me is green jobs. That's something that I've been working towards with like, because with the Green New Deal, I set up the Halton Hub and reaching out to MPs and councillors and just trying to get a plan put in place because I know full well that we're going to get to the last few few years before we get to net zero. They're going to panic. There's going to yeah. be nothing put in place and then they're going to start withdrawing all the jobs that are using the fossil fuels and the people are going to be left with nothing. Whereas if we start now and we start looking into green jobs and we start that transition, getting people into them green jobs, by the time we hit net zero, hopefully by 2050, they're going to be comfortable. They're going to be ready to go. And I think with Runcorn being a working class area and a lot of people are relying on food banks and a lot of people yeah. are unemployed and it was that way even before the pandemic so it's even worse now so if we can get these green jobs put in place it's going to be helping the people out and helping the planet so exactly. I think working towards that and I through doing that I know what it's like to reach out to people and not have people listen to what you're trying to do and not have people help you so if I can be that one person that just listens to people and starts the ball rolling and helping people then I've done what I need to do. You seem to both have a caring nature about you you just, you just basically just you've got this itch mm. to do something because mm -hmm. people don't do anything they're react they're reactive aren't they mm -hmm. yes. and and that is a real mm, with me as well I mean I'm, I don't think I've got the mental fac faculties to actually stand as a candidate <laughs> myself I'm too erratic um, but if if you could advise anyone to do something for this election obviously you're going to say vote green <laughs> but would you say the biggest point is to get as many people as active as possible in the political process in Holton because it's such a low turnout in local isn't it yeah because there's so many people like a lot of people are literally brought up thinking oh my vote doesn't mean anything it doesn't matter but i don't people fail to understand that if the this vast number of people that said my vote doesn't matter actually voted <laughs> yeah, the do. turnout in elections like historically will be so much better but i think a lot of young people because i know a few, a few of my friends are the same they they don't feel like it it it, it, it has a point because you know oh, these people win every time anyway and it's like well yeah because you know you, people aren't inspired enough to just it's it's an hour of your time not even that you know and it's it's local you just register to online uh, you get your poll car through you walk five minutes to your poll center and you do it and that's it and you know if if people put their heads together and actually you know could could do it yeah. we'd see some a, a much bigger scale of change in a much shorter amount of time i believe so. well that's been proven with the, what i just said about the listing has that changed direction that now a little bit i think it's <laughs> <on> me <laughs> But we'll just pick up where we left off. <laughs> 
sorry about the audience it's turning and he's not doing his job over there <laughs> he's, having to, he's having his drinks so it doesn't matter that could be a close-up of you guys that'd be good it'd be fun editing this but jesus christ um, but anyway i'm gonna leave you to it now yeah just just in case that edit's screwed up because all of, oh hang on look who it is it's ian. it's ian so thank you so much for joining me today and i really do wish you both every success in the in this next selection I, i've been very very proud and just blown away by the support the greens have offered me and how the greens are for you so thank you so much and have a great day thank you very much and let's hope you get somewhere all right see you later wave for the camera Bye. Bye.